We're recording now, so let's just, this is stuff that you probably saw last year in pre-calc, except a little bit different take on some of the stuff. Oops. And uh, this is going to be called um, Limits Involving Infinity. This is section 2-2, uh, two two. Limits Involving Infinity. Infinity and beyond. Okay, okay. you ready? And uh, so some of you, I start this with talking about this function, f of x, f of x equals 1 over x. Okay. And uh, who remembers, who remembers what f of x equals equals 1 over x looks like if I were to graph that. Who knows? you got to know. From the summer packet or something? you got to know. What? What? Do something with your fingers. Yes. It kind uh, of like sorry. Go ahead, Smith. So it kind of like curves in the first quadrant. Yep. The exactly. It looks like this. Do you remember that? Kind of. Yeah. Like that. Okay, so there are some limits involving infinity here, and you probably talked about that last year. You would say that the limit of 1 over x as x goes to positive infinity, what does that appear to be? You need to look at the graph and see what it appears to be. Zero, right? Because as I get x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, y appears to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You can confirm that analytically by putting some big numbers in here. I have 10 and 100 and 1,000 and a million and 10 billion. And when I put in bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, what does this number approach? Zero. Zero, okay? So that's the limit as x goes to infinity. The limit. You can also go to negative infinity, even though um, as you go to negative infinity, the limit of 1 over x, what does it appear to go to? It goes to, where's it going? Zero. It's going to zero as well, okay? So if you think about that, if I plug in very big negative numbers, okay, I'm going to get a negative number that's very close to zero. Okay. And uh, so that's said to be a limit at, at, at infinity, as you approach infinity. Then there's other limits going on here. There's the limit, okay, um, as x goes to 0 from the right side of 1 over x. What does that appear to be? As I approach 0, where am I going? Hello? To infinity. And B. And B. I knew that was going. Okay. To infinity. Okay. <laughs> and then the limit as x goes to 0 from the left side of f of x. Where is that going? Where is that going? To negative infinity, even though. You know, infinity is endless. You can still go to negative infinity instead of infinity, right? If you're really bad, then you go to negative infinity. If you're really good, then you go to positive infinity. Um, no. Okay, so anyway, this is called a limit as you approach infinity. This is called the limit, uh, a limit as you approach a number is it, so this is an infinite limit, this is a limit at infinity, okay? So they're kind of both involve infinity, but they're a little bit different, okay? So you may see that these have other things. A line that it approaches but never touches is called the what? An asymptote, okay? So we have some, some rules about that, okay? If, um, if we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes first. Um, so I'm going to write this. If um, the limit 
of f of x as x goes to infinity um, as x goes to infinity equals a or and or if the limit of f of x as x goes to negative infinity it's really hard to draw an infinity from this that's better infinity equals b then there are uh, there are horizontal asymptotes then horizontal asymptotes at y equals a or y equals b. And a and b are constants, right? They're numbers. Those are constants pi 2 or 3 or 7.7 .7 or pi over 2. For example, you may remember way back when the inverse tangent of x. Um, inverse tangent of x, I don't know if you remember, but it looks it looks kind of like this and this. I know you guys remember kind of what tangent of x looks like. It looks like this, like this, but inverse tangent of x, I don't know if you recall, it, it has asymptote, oh, I don't want to do that. I want that as on, okay? It has asymptotes here, and then it has asymptotes here, and it kind of looks like, let's see if I can get it at the right angle to try. Okay, it goes like this, and curves up, and then it goes like that, like that, and like that. And does anyone remember what these two lines are? Not one and negative one. Not pi, almost. Pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay? And so uh, so you would say that the limit, and don't worry about grabbing this by hand, but just but we're just talking about this in discussion of limits. So the limit as x goes to infinity, in this case, is equal to what? What's the limit as x goes to infinity? Hello? over 2, right? And the limit as x, whoops, I forgot to write a limit. Lim limits. And the limit of inverse tangent of x as x goes to negative infinity is equal to what? Negative pi over 2, because that's the line that it's approaching. Uh, where does that come from? Remember the unit circle, right? as the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you get closer and closer to what type of angle? What type of angle? A 90 degree angle, right? So that's why you're approaching pi over 2. And if you go in the negative direction, right, that ratio becomes negative pi over 2. Or that ratio becomes bigger, negative ratio, maybe closer to negative pi over 2. So let's do an example problem. Let's, um, Find the limit, find the limit, uh, find the limit, and asymptote, and or is, I made this one up, no, maybe I didn't make it up, but it's not in the book. Okay. Limit of two uh, x plus three. It's not very hard one. Over x plus three as x goes to infinity. Anyone know what that limit is? What's that limit? Who knows from what you remember from last year? Yes, uh, sorry, uh, Connor. Connor, right? Yes. Two. How do you know it's two? You're right. Because uh, that's the 
the twos in front of the x. Yeah, so we, had, we kind of learned a rule last year. If you have rational function and the exponents of the height, you take the exponents of the, or not the exponents, the, no, the exponents, if the exponents are the same of the highest degree function, then the, the um, limit is the ratio of their coefficients, right? Remember that from last year? The other thing you can do is do it kind of analytically, plug in some numbers, right? Because it's, I get plug in some numbers like 10. If I plug in 10, I get 23 over 13. If I plug in 100, I get 203 over 103. If I plug in 1,000, I get 1,000. I get in 2,003 over 1,003. And you can see why that limit approaches too, right? Because as those numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, that three becomes basically very unimportant, you know, and it becomes a ratio of two to one. So what's the rule of the exponent on the highest degree? Is that the rational If the exponent is the same of the highest degree term, then the ratio of the coefficient is the limit, and it is also the asymptote. Asymptotes, asymptote, horizontal asymptote, right? At y equals two. Okay? Yeah? No? And uh, so that's what that one looks like. So in other words, if I were to graph this thing real quick, this is really that straight line, isn't it? Um, but I would have a function that kind of is approaching this line. And I think this one goes like this. It'll have another, it'll have vertical asymptote. Someone said in the last class, who knows where the vertical asymptote is? Or we haven't talked about it yet. Where's the vertical asymptote? At three, right? So some of you guys know that already, that there's a vertical asymptote at three. So this function, without even doing much math, I know looks basically like something like that, okay? Yes, no, maybe, but we'll talk about vertical asymptotes in a second. Um, all right, so now we're gonna to talk about the sandwich theorem. Sandwich theorem, and this is a really good uh, Sandwich theorem revisited. This is called in the book. And uh, and this is a very good, clear example of the sandwich theorem. Find the limit, find the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of x, sine of x over x. Now you may look at that graph on the sideboard and look over there. Where does it appear that the limit is? The little graph of sine of x over x. Where does it appear that the limit of what that x approaches to get one? That's at zero. So here we're talking about something different. We're not talking about at zero. It's, it looks like it's approaching zero. Okay? As x gets very big, positive or negative. So we're going to prove that it does using the sandwich theorem. And what the sandwich theorem said, those of you who remember or looked at it, it says that if this function is always between two other functions, always has to be either greater than one function and less than the other function, then the, and the, and those two end functions have the same limit, and the function in between them has the same limit as well. So if I think about this, sine of x, sine of x over x has got to be less than or equal to something and greater than or equal to something else. Now, what does sine of x, what is the biggest sine of x could ever get? Probably, what's the, the range of sine of x? Sine curve. It, it has to be less than or equal to 1 all the time, right? And it has to be greater than or equal to what? Negative 1, right? So I know that this top part of this function is always let do. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, 
it is always less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1. And I still have an x on the bottom, right? x is x. So I put that over there. So this function, do you agree, would always have to be between those two functions? Okay? So now I can take the limits, okay, of negative 1 over x as x goes to infinity. And what's that equal to? Where does this go? 1 over x. As this gets very big, where does this go? 0. Okay? And what's the limit as x goes to infinity of positive 1 over x? 0, right? These two things are equal. So if these two things are equal, and this is always between those two functions, that the sandwich theorem says these three dots mean therefore. Do you know that? Okay? Therefore, the limit as x goes to infinity of uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of x over x is also equal to zero. Okay, so that's a very good uh, example for the sandwich theorem. All right, so I'm going to bring up my PowerPoint. Oh, I got to pause. 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 Did you hear about the bear who went into the bar? Oh, I'm recording. And the bartender said, what would you like, Mr. Bear? And the bear just sat there. Bartender said, why the big pause? <laughs> uh, that, um, these rules that we learned were, um, as x approaches a constant, okay, are the same rules when x approaches infinity, okay? So if you have a uh, function, the, the limit as x approaches infinity of a function which is a sum is equal to the sum of the limits, okay? And same with the difference of the limits. It's just the kind of the same rules. This is in your book. Sorry, I gotta go fast. So I'm not giving you time to write them down, okay? Um, same thing works for multiplication. There should be a time sign, right? Right over here. There should be a, yeah, whoops. Um, there should be a multiplication sign, okay, in between up here. So same rule applies for multiplication. Same rule applies for a constant. So I could pull the, I can either take the limit with the constant inside, or I can pull the constant outside and take then take the limit. You guys? And then um, same thing works with a quotient, provided the quotient is not equal to uh, zero. So how does this work? For a uh, problem, I'll show you. It's kind of cool for finding some limits. It gives you tricks to do um, certain limits. For instance, this one, the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x plus sine of x over x. So this, if I try to plug infinity in here, I get 5 times infinity plus sine of infinity. I don't know what sine of infinity is. It just bounces around a whole lot, right? Over infinity, and I don't know what that is, so I might want to do use some of these rules to break this apart, okay, into the limit of 5 of x, 5x over x, plus the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of x over x. And this, the x's cancel out, and what do I get out? What's the limit of a constant? Five, right? And then uh, what's the limit of this? We just figured this out. This equals what? Zero. So I get five plus zero, which equals five. So as I get very far away, far down the road, I get uh, five. See? So that's how you can apply some of those rules. Okay? Um, got it? You want me? Wait a second. Wait a second. So, moving on, um, we're going to talk about uh, vertical asymptotes. So, vertical asymptotes. If um, if the limit, if limits, uh, I guess I should have an if. OK. 
Okay. The limit of f of x as x goes to a from the positive side equals plus or minus infinity, okay? Or the limit of f of x, that's an infinity, in that, that's an a from the positive side. Maybe I should write that. A from the right side, sorry. A from the right side. Or the limit as x goes to a from the left side is equal to plus or minus infinity. Then you have a vertical, vertical, then vertical asymptote at x equals a. Right? You understand that? Yeah. And so, for example, for example, let's change colors. I need to change colors. Um, f of x uh, equals 1 over x minus 3 squared. Find the limit as x goes to 3 from the right side. The limit is it of uh, f of x and the limit as x goes to 3 from the minus side of f of x and then find the asymptotes. Find asymp asymptotes. Okay? So if I were doing this, you, again, you can do this analytically, okay? If I plug in a number very, very close to three, what happens here? What's 3.01 minus three? 0 0.01, what's one divided by 0 0.01? Oh, first you have to square it, right? So that by 0 0.0001, and that would be like 10,000, okay? If I plugged in even a smaller number in there, like 3.001, closer to 3, then I get even a bigger number. So what is happening to this as I get closer and closer to 3 from the right side? It's going to infinity, right? And beyond. And what's happening? And if I plug in a negative, not a negative number, a number to the left of 3, what's a number very close to 3 on the left side? 2.999, right? I would get negative 0 0.001 or something like that squared gives me a positive number, right? So what is the limit of this one? Positive or negative infinity? Positive. Positive infinity because I square it, so it's a positive number. If this were here, right, then you get positive infinity for one and negative for the other. But in this case, you end up getting a function that looks like, you know, as I get close to zero, I get close to infinity. As I get close to infinity, I get close to zero, and I can sketch in that this graph will look like this. From the left side I approach infinity, from the right side I approach infinity. As this gets very large, if I take the limit as x goes to infinity, I would get zero. Right in there I would have a horizontal asymptote. Okay? So you can sketch these functions pretty well. Just by uh, just by um, taking the limits of it. All right? Questions? Okay. One more thing. I know it's a long class, but eight more minutes. Let's see if I can fit this in. We have uh, end end behavior. And what end behavior means? In short, is if you have some function, okay, some function, and it's bouncing around all over the place in here, you know, what is it doing when you get far away, okay? What does it look like when I get very, 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 very far away from the function? So for very big, large values, x and very big, negative values of x, okay? What does it look like? And the way that you do that is by looking at, um, where'd my PP go? 
Okay. Um, this, I'm on. I'm going to look at um, end behavior. We, these are just examples that I'm powering through. Right end behavior model. So this might na make much sense to you, but I'm going to try to tell you what it says. Okay. Um, if the limit as x goes to infinity of some function over some other function equals 1, then the bottom function is what the function looks like. Okay? For instance, I'm going to try to come up with my own example. For instance, say you have uh, a function like, uh, I want to write on top of that power function. Okay? Um, can I do that? <laughs> I think I could do that. So, watch this. I am such a high tech guy. Now I can write over the top. For instance, say you have f of x equals, okay, x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 2x plus 1. I'm not even going to put a square in there, okay? Who knows what this function looks like for very large values of x? Who remembers what it is? Yes, uh, sorry. Go so ahead. Uh, Lucas. It goes to infinity on both sides. So it goes up. Very good. It looks a lot like x to the fourth, right? Because you know it's positive, you know it's even, right? So it looks like a w. But what this rule says right here, if I put x to the fourth right down here, Okay, and I take the limit of this, whoa, sorry, stop, come on, I'm doing so well with this thing, okay, <laughs> my eraser isn't working, now it's working, okay, and I take the limit as x goes to infinity, I could break this up into the limit of x to the fourth over x to the fourth, right? Minus the limit of 3x to the third over x to the fourth, as x goes to infinity, right? Um, plus limit of 2x over x to the fourth. Plus, plus limit of 1 over x to the fourth, as x goes to infinity. This thing here, what's this equal to right here? One. This is equal to one. This one, these reduce and becomes the limit of three over x as x goes to infinity. What's that? What's the limit of three over x as x goes to infinity? This goes to zero, right? This one here also goes to what? This one goes to zero, if I'm going to infinity, right? This one goes to where? Where does this become as I go to infinity? One over x to the fourth. Where does that go? That goes to zero. So you have one minus zero, zero, zero. So this thing is equal to one, which means that the bottom function, y equals x to the fourth, is, is the end, the right end behavior model. And for a polynomial, it's going to be the right and the left end behavior model. Okay? Now, very, very last thing. I have four minutes. I know I'm going really fast. But if I have a function that's a little bit different, like what they ask you in a homework problem, they say show that, show that, that, that to that. G of x equals x is a right right end behavior model. This is a little confusing in the book, so you want to kind of listen, okay? For f of x equals uh, x, where is my, where is my problem? Um, x plus e to the negative x. x plus e to the negative x. 
So what I want to do with this, I want to show that the limit as x goes to infinity of this of x plus e to the negative x over x, I want to show show that this thing is equal to what? One. One. Very good. Okay, so someone's with me here. And the way I could do this, if I plug in infinity, I get infinity over plus something over infinity, so I break it apart again. I get the limit as x goes to infinity of x over x plus the limit of e to the negative x over x, because I could break this apart to x over x plus e to the negative x over x as x goes to infinity. Um, these cancel out. What's the limit of this thing? This is equal to 1. Now the limit of this thing is a little more tricky, but what you could do is rewrite this using rules of exponents. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over positive e to the x, right? e to the positive x over x. So if I plug infinity in here, what's 1 over e to the infinity? e raised to a very, very big, 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 big power. 1 over a huge number, what's that going to go to? 0. Zero. Okay? And I plug, and on the bottom, I have a very big, 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 big number, right? So big down here. What does this thing go to? Zero over big. Zero. So this part goes to zero, and you have one plus zero, which equals one. Therefore, for very large values of x, this function looks like the line y equals x. Okay? Yes, sir. 